Welcome once again to New Game Plus. This is a retro gaming podcast where three guys spend seven days playing one old game, and then we talk about it. My name's Dustin. My name's Kenny. My name's Nolan. And this is episode number 96. 96. And before we get into our retro game of the week, I've got some video game news. This past week, Valve announced a brand new game. Half Life 3. Don't even pull my chain. Yeah. They re- I mean, they really did. I know you're not into the news regularly, Kenny, but some of Valve's biggest fans gathered together in one room and the lights dimmed and footage began to roll and this anticipation began to build within the crowd. It w- You could feel it just watching the video. And then what? It was like a card game or something? Three options for this announcement, right? Best option is what? Half-Life Half Life 3. Half Life 3 Everybody goes nuts. I mean, it's the greatest thing that, that's ever happened. A, a decent option, an okay option, what? Is a, like a brand new IP, right? Like a, a um, cool... Yeah, something new. Cool or value. Portal 3. What What would you think would be the rage-inducing, non-satisfying option? Oh, that they hmm. tell everybody that they're never going to make games again. That was hey, their big we're reveal? Just committing, we're just committing to Steam, guys. That's a good point. I was trying Let's to think of official. like a game, but yeah, if they were like, well, we're done. Well, <laughs> they wouldn't do a big reveal. Like, Ta-da! They'd be, like footage Screen. of screen, we're done. Yeah. They could. No, uh, no, I see. I, I think the uh, third option, the rage inducing, non satisfying option, which it, it was, is a Dota 2 card game. I don't think that's. I, th- I think that's kind of cool. Kenny, honestly. you called it, but uh, I don't think you've seen the video, Kenny. I passed it on to you, Nolan. No, but I, so- oh, I you just, did. Have- I, I actually just really stole your thunder because I do follow gaming news, Ooh. and so I was going. I was being a jerk. He knew it was a card game. <laughs> So yeah, so there's a videotape, uh, or someone's videotape, oh, oh, we're back in the 90s, uh, someone's yeah, video yes, recording so. the, uh, the reaction, they're, they're, like the anticipation is there, and then it says Dota 2 card game, and everybody just goes, <laughs> oh, like boo. Just like it, deflates. Yeah, yeah it's but completely they, not what they wanted. When you look at it, though, that could be, that could be fine. Hearthstone successful. Yeah, they wanted um, to get some of that Hearthstone money. Bethesda well, did it. it, and it worked. I think it would sure. be good. And we were all into Hearthstone, Kenny, probably just a little bit more, uh, just historically, you are Too into much. those yeah, into For those card games. Do you think this game, Artifact, will effectively serve as competition to Hearthstone, or do you think it'll just kind of fall flat? Because there's been other card games that have come out since, guys, and I think they've all kind of just fallen, fallen flat. Yeah, it's hard. Like, if you can get people to play the game... That's a format that can work well. And I don't know what they're planning well enough to do you know, to make the game interesting. But I also know Valve makes pretty good games. Like, they know what fun is, and they know what people like. And it's got the crossover user base of of Dota players, which is not small by any means. And so I think there's a possibility that it could do okay. I don't think it's going to be Hearthstone big. I think they'll make a little bit of money and be like, eh. Well, the last DLC or the new season of Hearthstone was kind of a letdown for a lot of people, wasn't it, Kenny? That uh, jungle. I didn't one. even. I didn't even play that last one. From what I understand, it was out. a little weird, from what they were expecting. So, I don't know. Might be well timed. People whine every time they change the game, that's but true. that's gonna always happen with something that evolves. It, still, it's a hard thing to jump into that arena unless you're doing something really novel. But it's a big enough company. Yeah, it's Valve. And a big enough, you know, sort of crossover user base of interest that people are gonna hear about it and give it a shot and so if it if it's good it might be okay i don't know will will there ever be a half-life uh this, obviously this has been discussed time and time again what do you guys think because we played half-life one as a part of this podcast we haven't done two yet i, I think it's probably is that in the 15 year range? i don't think so okay no, maybe not, not yet. yet uh do you think there will ever ever be a half-life three just briefly yeah i do yes so then it's in pro- production right now secretly uh, i didn't say that mm. But yes, I think, I think so. They maybe have written story or something. Yeah, I, think I think they're so. waiting on VR to be mainstream. Mm-hmm. I think no, it's going to be their. I yeah, I think if no. VR doesn't ever take off, then it's going to delay the game because I think their plan is make it the big push VR title to get everybody else on board. No. Well, 
Either way, Half-Life fans, you're going to have to keep waiting. And if that makes you sick, go to the doctor, get some pills. Uh, do make sure it is a real doctor or you might end up with more viruses than you know what to do with, which is a constant problem in our retro game of the week, Dr. Mario. All right, it was a little more straightforward than normal, so I'll give you that. Sorry, I'm going to say that one more time, Dustin, because there might have been ba bad audio in the background. Must... It's fine. I'll, I'll edit out it either okay. way. Okay, yeah. Wife's uh, alarm was ringing, so um, hope... I told her we were recording. I don't know. Unacceptable thing. <laughs> I don't believe her. Uh, we yeah. had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Be right back, guys. Um, no. Um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. What is this kid, Nolan? Totally He's not going to be able All to right, do All right, let's go into overview. Shush it. One more time. Sorry. <laughs> he sneezed, y'all. All right. Dr. Mario is a 1990 Tetris clone. Join us as we move on to talk about the gameplay now of Dr. Mario. Oh. <laughs> For real, though, like, uh, Nintendo made it, whatever. Here we Dang. go. All so right. That was the whole summary? Yeah, I, I thought so, the right? joke at first. The designer's right, name is what? Takahiro Harada. That's it. Let's go. That, that should give you... No. Okay, so I'll give you just a little bit more. Nintendo developed and published this game and decided to take Mario out of plumber overalls and outfit him with a doctor's lab coat, like stethoscope and all. And... Uh, if you're familiar with Nintendo, which most people are, you've seen Mario in a variety of different settings and uh, a lot of different characters, outfits, uh, you know, the whole nine yards. Is he that taught us, He taught us typing. He, uh, he, taught, he taught us where to find the F key over and over and over again. <laughs> but uh, being that it was 1990 when this game was released, Dr. Mario did come out on the original Nintendo Entertainment System and... A month or two later came out on Game Boy, so pretty much released simultaneously on both of those Nintendo platforms. But later, over the, over the coming years, it was re-released and ported on virtually every single Nintendo home console and most of the portable consoles as well. Uh, there, there, there's no real story to speak of. It's a simple fall, falling block puzzle game, so really do think Tetris. The only catch, instead of shapes... Uh, we're, we're working with colors and instead of just clearing lines which you do in tetris we are destroying little viruses that are colored red blue or yellow uh, i don't I honestly don't want to go too much further in game description or we'll have nothing to talk about in our gameplay section <laughs> yeah so what i will ask is did you guys play dr mario growing up and and if you did on what console i played it on game boy and i also had tetris so that's like, I, don't, I played it, but not a lot, I guess, because there were other things to do. And you're not talking about Game Boy Color, right? You're talking about the... No, I'm talking about Game Boy. Yeah, which obviously has no color in it, and so it's just a different thing. In this game, colors matter. You've got pills that are, I don't want to get too far into it, but are uh, either a Spoiler solid alert. color... But they're split in half, and so one color on one side, one color on the other. And that's what you're having to match up. On the Game Boy, since there's not color, you've kind of got three different designs. One's that, one, one that's clear, one that's solid, and one that's somewhere yeah. in between. And, and yeah. It's just a different thing you have to get used to. Once you get used to it, I think it's as easy to track and follow, but, uh, but it is just something else to get used to. So you played it on Game Boy, Nolan? Yeah. It's much more pleasant to play on NES or one of the newer consoles oh. because then, I mean... You have colors to work with, so I think that's like the best way to play it. So I don't know if I got the true Dr. Mario experience back then. I I had a friend that played a lot of this game, and Why? really really liked to play it competitively, and so would like have people come and play two player and just crush everybody. It was one of those that he had just played it so much he got really really good at it. And so I didn't like the game then, not because I didn't like the game itself, but because I was just bad at it and lost every time I played. And so I didn't have very fond memories of the game. Um, and it was all his fault. So was that on NES? I believe so, yes. So you didn't own it, but you played with a friend? Yeah, quite a bit. Okay. 
this entire episode are you going to be fighting back sneezes <laughs> yep <laughs> okay yep for me uh, a friend had it uh, i i didn't have it uh or we didn't own it but a friend did have dr mario on nintendo and would go over to his house and would play him but also his dad was like super into it so his dad would just like beat us over and over and he was really good he would play it on the fastest speeds and it was impressive to watch but not fun to play against yeah and i i do remember though I, and i don't have multiplayer experience with the game i should say but i remember playing dr mario <laughs> in a really weird way but WarioWare incorporated is this game boy advance game that is basically a spoof of nintendo and all of the characters it's wario's game so all of his games are all funny there's like a mini game that is dr mario in it so that's actually the most experience i have playing the game it was a, a funny version of it yeah all right let's go into gameplay So in case people haven't played this game, let's break down how it actually plays. You kind of talked specifically, Dustin, but if you're picturing Tetris, you're kind of on the right track, but not really. Uh, because it's like Tetris, but where all of your blocks are specifically one by two, right? Two yeah, sort of... Well, or two by one. Pixels if were, yeah, two by one. <laughs> it, they're just... Yeah, they're, they're two pieces wide. So they're very little relative to like Tetris where you're aligning shapes. But but here you're lining up colors. But And, and you've got your rectangle play field that is in the middle of the screen with, a, a, a you know, your, oh, it's, your it's next very block. Much, right. It's, it's very much is a, a ripoff of Tetris. I'm not saying that was an unfair thing to say. I think it absolutely was a game in that vein, but is slightly different mechanically. Yeah. Because your blocks are smaller, and your main goal isn't just survive You know these increasing speeds. Your main goal is to clear out all the viruses on the screen. And so, play slightly differently in terms of how you have to think about it, but it's the same thing where um, pushing one button will rotate your block one direction, pushing the other button will rotate it the other direction. And you've got to move them around and line them up so that you get four blocks in a row or more of the same color horizontally or vertically and when you do those disappear everything that is on top of them falls down and it trickles down and then you continue to clear the screen i think it's fair to say the fundamentals are the same as tetris you you get to preview your next piece over in the top right and it slowly falls and you rotate it and you place it and yeah it looks similar too because it's in the screen but they they definitely made it a different game i mean it's different enough that it can it can stand alone as its own puzzle game but uh yeah and so when you start the game you can actually choose three is, is i think three settings yeah three uh, options three settings yeah so you've got your virus level which is right. pretty much just how many viruses are on the play field yeah. how much clutter Zero. is there that you have to clear through to beat that level level zero to 20 that, those right. 20, that's 20 being the most in between level. yeah and then you have the speed that you can play. Right. So how fast the pill or how slow the pill comes down. And you've got three options there, like slow, medium, or fast. Yeah. Right. And then is the final option music? Music, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you've got two options. <laughs> Chill. Oh, you have three options. Or, oh, you Not can turn it off, yeah. You can turn oh. it off. <laughs> yeah, so you've got the, the normal music and then one called Chill, which, by the way, is not chill at all. It's very stressful. No, it's, not. <laughs> it's a lot more chill than Fever. Fever is your first option. Fever, okay. And it, and it is feverish. Um, like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, just a point to the music while we're here. Uh, I'm not a little a bit, because we, we probably should save some of that for age. Okay. <laughs> but it's... I wasn't a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you've got those three options, your your virus level, your speed, and your music type to, to select before. And then you go into the Tetris-like game where you're trying to clear out these, these colored viruses. And with each progressive stage, you've got more viruses. And throughout each individual level, the speed increases. I don't know if it's based on time, points, or how many viruses are left. I feel like it's score. Or, yeah, points. As you go, because I, I couldn't tell either, but to me, it seemed like the higher your score got, the faster it got. And the, the unique thing about the game to me was that this game begins hard and gets easier. You know what I mean? 
Like, no? I don't know what you mean at all. Okay, for me, getting started is so hard because you're you're way at the top. So Tetris is an empty playing field, and you okay, start from there oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you build it. Okay. This game is kind of kind of towards the top of the jar, and you're having to like get make some progress and kind of get things situated. And for me, that's really hard. I know it speeds up, but like. Towards the end of the level, once everything's gone, you've got more time to think. At least for me, I did. I don't know if you guys yeah. know what I mean. So that's especially true in later stages. Like when you've got... So in your early stages, you, you don't have a lot of viruses oh, near yeah. the top. But, but in later stages, your viruses start right up at the top. And so your first few... Your, um, your first, you know, uh, two to three minutes of placement in that stage is crucial. And if you mess those up, then you're going to be screwed for the rest of the stage. So, yeah, I totally see where, what you're talking about there. I might have and said that, that your, weird, yeah. But. No, but that makes sense. Your first your first few placements with those uh, are vital and can either, like, completely lose the stage for you or can set you up for a, a much easier mm -hmm. uh, game there. It's also worth pointing out you can you, – you can't – Sorry, you can delete the lines horizontally and vertically, and you yes. can even combo those to make like a cross, which is really hard to do, but that's really useful, clearly. So, question, because I'm torn. I think there's arguments both ways. Do you guys think, not overall, because they're, they're different games, um, but both of these games, when things start going south, they go south really fast. It's exponential, yeah. Yeah, like if you're doing well and then screw up one placement in a really bad spot, things just get ugly. Which well, game do you guys think it's easier to salvage a mistake? This game or Tetris, is that what yeah, you're Yeah, this game or Tetris. Oh, Tetris, 100%. Because I can't decide. Oh, I'd say Tetris, you can salvage a mistake so much easy, easily because any block can help clear other blocks. But in this one, it's only the certain color. So if you're not matching those up, then, yeah, then you're uh, screwed at, at a much higher rate. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I, I think so, too. And I was going to say that and then just second guess myself enough that that's why I wanted to kind of ask it. Because this one, it felt like if if I messed up, I might as well just bad you know there's little mistakes that aren't a big deal but if i did one or two really poor placements it was going to be so hard to dig out that i just pretty much assumed that that level was I, over also i'm bad at this game but still <laughs> i think me you're too. right in saying that because and for me it's because looking at dr mario compared to looking at tetris i am so stressed out looking at dr mario because it's really ugly and really cluttered and that's how it's supposed to be you're supposed to be able to manage that that's how you're supposed to win the game but in tetris at least i can have built my mistake and be like okay this is how i can probably get around this let me wait for a line block and then delete that line dr mario it's just like more clutter i don't know it's really hard to salvage a mistake and i think that's that's part of the uh like the draw to the game for people so the Levels go up to number 20. And then if you're able to beat number 20, I think it goes on a few more. I don't know. How, I, I don't think it's infinite, but I, but I do think you've got a level 21 may, may end there, may go to 24. Not entirely sure. But did did either of you try level 20? Yeah, I tried it. <laughs> no, Kenny? You're like, I can't even get level 1. Not going to do 20. I tried no, it. I mean, I, I beat some of the early levels. Yeah. But then like where I was like, let's see if I'm okay at this game. I would set myself at about half the viruses, so at like level 10 or so, which is already fairly cluttered. It's getting up there. And if I put the speed fast, which I think is the most fun way to play, but definitely the most challenging, I had a really, really hard time with it. No, um, I can't. I could have handled fast that. Speed? That's no, I could handle 10 at like low and it would be fine, but it got a little just boring. You know, it kind of speeds up, but like whatever. So, I, I tried know. 20 because Jason in our Discord beat it at like high speed the level 20 with high speed so i was yeah. like okay let me see what it's about and yeah uh, and then I, you got crushed oh absolutely yeah well, so, i wasn't so even I on saw, high he, he didn't beat 20 at high speed he beat 20 at medium speed oh fair, still uh, <laughs> which, still very impressive but i mean absolutely. high speed i don't even understand but got people do it and people do it fairly easily uh, but uh, so i tried level 20 because i was inspired on slow and 
I, like I couldn't do it on slow. Like I, I, I would clear out some of the middle, but the sides I would just get stacked up really poorly. And then there's no way to clear them out at a certain point, you know, because yeah. I can't go vertical anymore. So I can only go horizontal. And that's so hard to do when you don't have it's anything really to hard. build it up with. It, yeah, it just, and, and it's especially in like level 20 where those first, your first decisions matter most. And it's so hard for me to plan ahead, even seeing the little pill that's coming next in the top corner. Like, like it's no. so hard for me to know. And what? then is what I do is like, I know where I want to place this. And then I, and then I won't be able to press the, the switch fast enough or I'll press it too many times and it will end up in a completely improper position. That's what I was going to say uh, to your point about looking up at the next thing coming. That's a, a really important gameplay habit that you need to form in order to play this game and maybe tetris you can make that tetris argument as well too. absolutely um, and for me it took like a long time because what i was doing i was just keeping my eyes on my current one and i was like this is going too fast i gotta decide really quickly and then by the time i placed it i was like oh wait no i didn't want that color so yeah if you're gonna play the game you need to get familiar with that that up next pill Versus, however, I think is where this game will shine. The the two player, I agree. Uh, and, and it, it's very very difficult to do with Game Boy. I think you've got to have links and stuff like that. So that probably didn't happen near as much as Nintendo, which makes it really easy. You have two controllers, you can play on one console. I think that's where the game will shine because instead of playing by yourself, and I don't think you can even play a CPU in the in this Nintendo version. Probably not. Uh, I don't know. And, and so instead of playing just f simply for a high score, you're trying to clear the viruses faster than your opponent, which a lot more fun, right? So is it the last person? So is it keeping track of how many you have defeated or is it who defeats the last virus? I think whoever defeats the last virus first, that state, oh. then you're done. Oh, wait, do you each have an identical like? I don't screen? recall because I literally haven't played it since like when we played a lot. As kids, I just played single player this week because I didn't have anybody to play with. But I thought there was almost a like extra competitive punishment. Like if you cleared a color on your screen, that it would like add one to the other person's screen. I may be thinking of another That's game or a Tetris, later game. I think. I think like I or I, I might be thinking like, of the multi. Yeah, because multiplayer Tetris, I know like can add lines at the bottom, like a full block of lines that you can't really clear That's and pushes it higher up but i i mean we might be wrong neither of us or none of us really did versus this week multiplayer it's not as easy to do anymore obviously no it's not uh and, and so uh, but either way i think nolan that that it's something like what you just mentioned and that you've got identical uh virus screens it might not be identical but it might be the same number of viruses probably which yeah. which either way you're you're competing against your opponent to try to yeah. clear can, out the virus be more efficient and yeah it's certainly just who is best at the game it's one of those things that if somebody knows what they're doing they're gonna be dominant it's unfortunate because gonna... our discord really wanted us to play multiplayer they kept emphasizing this is the way to play the I game agree. And, and and I think that is where it shines. Yeah, I, I think so too. Just by you know talking about it, but yeah, we didn't get to this week. So yeah, the, I mean, the only one I would have been able to play two player with would be my wife, and that wouldn't change much of the gameplay <laughs> of what I've already done. Like I'd win a lot. <laughs> and she's good at theme hospital. She just she likes doctor games. <laughs> I don't know if it <laughs> translates. It translates. They're all it's the almost, same. It's almost the same thing. They're all the same. All right, let's move to aged. So one nice thing about a puzzle game is that naturally it's just going to age well. You're not looking for, you know, the crazy graphics. Like as long as it's what you're accomplishing is clear, it's going to be pretty easy. And a game like this that the buttons and inputs are there means that it can be played on different devices really easily that it ports really easily, that everything that made this game popular when it was there endures. I mean, you can maybe argue that 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 music ages sometimes and you get, you know, iconic old music and, and Nolan, I know you had some thoughts on the music. We should talk about that. But to me, the core of this game just translates to modern day really easily. Seems like, Nolan, you disagree a little bit. I think in this case, Dr. Mario, the character aged 
and the game did not age well and he himself the character did because his inclusion in smash brothers and other like warioware and other games like that that's why he's still a thing i think like i i think the game itself that we played this week is not playable today i think it's um i think it's hard to look at hard to listen to and hard to be interested in when there's other games like Tetris to be played. And I might be well, I might be a little unfair in saying that, but but Dr. Mario outgrew his game and went to Smash Brothers and people love him over there. So uh I don't like I don't even see them remaking a Dr. Mario puzzle game and it being successful. Maybe but I don't they know. have I mean, to change stuff. They've done it dozens of times. I know like I'm and saying it's, again, it's not like it's not it's, like there's a bunch of Tetris remakes that are super popular that people are doing. Are like, you crazy? It's a no. no I'm, they've remade Tetris a lot as well. I don't know. <laughs> I but just here, uh, okay. So I neither agree. of them have like created a fad. They were puzzle games, and now people are still doing puzzle games. But here, I don't I, know. Like it's it's it, it plays exactly like it played. There's no hurdles. I, I agree with both of you to some degree. So I, I think it has aged well as a puzzle game. Like, not only as a puzzle game, but as a Nintendo game. You've got the quality and the love that was put into it to start with. And, and Nintendo ages relatively well with most Nintendo most titles. Most games, yes. And so I, I still think the viruses... We're, we're working on very limited hardware here during the time of this creation. And so the viruses are still cute and menacing at the same time with their little animations that they're doing over to the side that makes you hate them and want to delete them as soon as possible. It's still very clear that Mario is indeed a doctor. Uh, even the layout and the tiled background is easy on the eyes. Fever and Chill songs that are either like Frank frantic and panicky or relaxed and tranquil or supposed to be it's, yeah it's not at all like i i think that those songs are not bad in and of themselves what i do think is bad with that is that those are the only songs that you've got and you can only change the song type at the beginning of your play and so every playthrough no matter what stage you're on is that same song over and over and over and over and over again. And so that's what I think, if it does age, that's one of the primary areas that it does age. I want to say that that whole choose your soundtrack while you play feature is brilliant and was a little ahead of its time. I just wish those options weren't atrocious. I've never been a fan of Dr. <laughs> Mario theme. I know some people are, and it's in Melee, and it's in Smash 4, at redone, obviously, and it sounds better, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm with Nolan. Uh, maybe it's just because of nostalgia and you know positive experiences with one game and negative experiences with the other and it's some ptsd talking but i always really enjoyed tetris tracks again they were repetitive but they were really good uh, yeah. varied and iconic and fun and just fit um these i didn't enjoy as much for whatever reason i i, I get that there could be appeal they're um good and creative i feel like dustin the only way to argue for um for the name of chill is that maybe they weren't trying to like say this is like chill out music, but saying you're sick, you've got a fever, or you've got the chills, because both of these music they were, were like sure. kind of the same. I don't know. Um, I thought I also thought the music was sort of a a weak point in my mind. But Nolan, I think ultimately you're answering like whether the game is good in your mind for playing today and i think that's a different question than whether it's like aged well i i still think it's super accessible it does what it does um especially with multiplayer it's it's something people can just pick up and play and it's straightforward what you're doing and it it is what it was and there's no hurdles and that's always nice when you're trying to play an old game but i think it's just a different question than should people play it for its merits I mean, just because my answer to both of those are similar doesn't mean... I, I still think it aged poorly. That's fair. As mentioned earlier, Dr. Mario does have many ports and remakes. Uh, I, I would suggest this. Well, so there's a Super Nintendo version that is two games in one cartridge where they combine and include both Tetris and Dr. Mario. And so... Maybe try this one. So there, there's a few graphic upgrades because we moved from, what, 16 to 32 bit? Is that what we've done? Or 8 to 16? Either one. Uh, we've You've got multiplayer with computer 
but you can also do multiplayer with another player, as you can in this one. However, you can do mixed match, which means that you can switch between De Tetris and Dr. Mario, and there are a lot more uh, custom customizing options within how you play against one another, what level one person starts at, what level another person starts at. So even if you've got different skill levels between you two. You can do two, like some handicaps? Yeah, you can definitely. Huh. So there's a lot more That's flexibility with that game. And you've got Tetris, which you might be hearing is a theme throughout this episode that might potentially be a better game. <laughs> Which we'll find out in our concluding summary section. So, men, do you give this game... So, doctors, do you give this game your vote for New Game Plus status? Which is our general thumbs up or thumbs down saying, do we suggest viewers go and find a copy of this game and play it? Or reserve their retro gaming time for another old game? I'll begin by saying, I imagine a lot of people have a fond connection with this game. For many, it's probably the only game that like your mom or dad would play with you. <laughs> like I've heard that story time and time again, that it's games like these where you'll have uh, some kind of connection with a parent or a friend maybe that you would battle with for countless hours into the night. So I respect that. I understand that. But I do not think that nostalgia alone makes for a good game that is still enjoyable today. Furthermore, I don't think that good aging alone, because I thought this game aged fine, means that you should play the game. I set it up front, or I mentioned it up front. I think that this is a worse clone of Tetris. If you want a puzzle game like this, just play Tetris. If you must have Dr. Mario uh, in your repertoire, I'd say play the Super Nintendo version, but not this one. So I do not give this game, Dr. Mario, my vote for New Game Plus status. I got a lot of flack this week from some of our viewers about how much, how in-depth I go on uh, my reviews. So I'm just going to say, I also don't give it NG+. Negative. You read Discord? Like twice. <laughs> but why? <laughs> just one sentence, why? Can you do it? Can you I don't know sentence? if there's a middle ground for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a middle ground. Okay. Um, we'll I cut agree you with Dustin. Nostalgia's not enough. And people who swear by this game today are only remembering that. Oh, dang. All right. That's two no's, Nolan. Uh, it d doesn't necessarily matter if you say yes or no, but I think that you're going to say no. Gosh, Nolan hates it's this not, game. You can tell by his face. Of course I don't. It's not good. <laughs> like, the only reason I love Dr. Mario the character is because they brought him to Smash, and I love Nintendo's whole thing where they revive unknown or unpopular characters like Ness in N64 Smash. No one knew who that was, but Earthbound's a great game. Well, my friend Greg, I would be beating him. He mained Mario, and I would be beating him, and then he would switch to Dr. Mario because he's got like a black outfit, and I don't know. I just thought that was so funny that he would do that, and then he'd beat me. So that's about Smash Brothers. That's not about this game. This game is terrible. <laughs> you don't even want to talk about this game. Question so yourself bad. if you like it. Oh my gosh! Wow. If ever there was an episode that I wish I could have not pulled punches and tried to still highlight the good aspects, it's this one because it doesn't deserve that much hate. It was a great game. It was super popular. There was reasons for it. There's reasons it's gotten lots of ports. I'm maybe. going back at myself now. Maybe I no, just don't like it at all. For today. It's not a fun game. There's better puzzle games today, and there's more classic puzzle games from back in the day. Now you're talking. You already gave your uh, yeah. You <laughs> spill. You can't you know. not do it. Also, I have PTSD about it. And hold on, is, is this might this be our first Nintendo title that we unanimously gave a thumbs down and did it not might give be. our vote? Like no, we rarely do a unanimous thumbs down. Period. Oh, ni ma Nintendo specifically? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm talking one about. One of like this Nintendo caliber, yes. This one was developed popular. and published by Nintendo. That's usually an instant thumbs up. I'll, I'll certainly say it's one of the most popular games that we've all given thumbs down to. That's probably fair to say. I, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I just don't no, get I, it. I don't get it. I, when we, we agree with you, just probably not as as strong as, as you are projecting. But this game does not get our vote for New Game Plus. Let's see what some of our viewers had to say. Jan wrote in to our email, NGP 
podcast at gmail.com and said, hi guys, I played this game when I was young on my Game Boy. A nice game to grab the Game Boy and just play for a few minutes. The gameplay is easy to learn, but hard to master. Sure, it doesn't have a deep story li- like, for example, Zelda Breath of the Wild, <laughs> but it's easy to pick up and play. Huh. Yeah, let's definitely compare They're those similar two though. You gotta give it that. I, just, I like that people are referencing it because I like to reference it so Nolan will get salty. Jan continues, this game is also high on my list of good multiplayer games. It's lots of fun playing this with a friend. If the other player is not as good, you can adjust handicap or change the level difficulty to make it more interesting of a game. I would give this my vote for New Game Plus. P.S. If you want to play it in another setting, give Tetris and Dr. Mario on the Super Nintendo a go in multiplayer. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with the sentiment. I feel like, honestly, if I was better at this game... I probably would have given it New Game Plus. I legitimately think I had as much fun playing this game as I did last week's game. But there's a reason week? neither of them got New Game Plus for me, Spyro. I know, <laughs> no one looks at me like I'm crazy. Dr. But like, Mario it's not Spyro. like this was a terrible title. I think people are allowed to like it, and I think if you get the chance to play multiplayer with somebody else who's good, who's good and puzzle games are your jam, and you know, retro is the thing you do. Like, it's going to have a place, but he's right. It's going to have a place for, like, a couple of minutes where you pick it up and kind of go, like, okay, fun, and then you move on. It's not something that's going to, like, endure. This next email, I want Nolan to take a stab at. Liam wrote it, and he said, I have a friend who said Dr. Mario is the worst game ever. Curious to see what he was talking about, I decided to play the NES version. I loved it and asked him why he thought it was bad. He said, it's literally the same as Tetris. There was no creativity put into this game, therefore it's bad. For years now, I've tried to explain to him that this game is different, but he doesn't listen. Do you have any counter arguments? So Nolan, I want you to try to come up with a counter argument to why this game was so bad. I am Liam's friend. No, no, you have to come up with a counter (laughs) argument. Yeah, his argument's not good. It's not... I said earlier in this episode that while the fundamentals are the same as Tetris, the game is unique on its own. And I I don't think it's fair to say they didn't get creative with it because they did. I just don't think... I don't think it's fun enough and, like, I think it gets undeserved praise. I think that's probably why I'm so bitter about it. Like, it's not that great. I know Nintendo made it and I know Dr. Mario's cute and everything, but... uh. I don't think I, I do think that he's right in saying Tetris is a better game if that's what he was trying to say. So uh, I think, and I maybe am. this one, maybe this one isn't fair, and and I could be totally wrong. But I think part of this is a like generational thing. I don't think I, so. I, I think that's no, sometimes it the case. You and me, Kenny, at least. But y'all oh, are sages. Play, no, You're I, like four I years old. I played older than me. like in the era when. I knew people who were like I played it old on Game Boy. and only had a Nintendo to play puzzle games. Like all they would play is Tetris and Dr. Mario. And it was huge and a fad in its day and it like it was its own thing. And I don't know that it's not generational. We ever Sometimes saw that. that's the case, but it's not. Because I played the original Game Boy and Tetris. Before it, Nolan <laughs> kills us, Kenny and myself, uh, we're gonna read one last email from Bill. Bill. <laughs> He said, hey, all I played Dr. Mario this week with my wife, who is not a gamer at all. When her and I moved in first, when when her and I first moved in together in 2012, this was the only Nintendo game I could convince her to play with me. We made it a habit to drink heavily, eat takeout, and (laughs) listen to music while playing. She would then proceed to destroy me round after round after round, often playing at a higher difficulty level than me. It remains one of only two games we played together, the other being Yo Noid, which she had as a kid, and I (laughs) thought to try to invoke some nostalgia for her. Oh. Anyway, I suck at this game. It's fun, but not as fun as Tetris. I'm going to bet that's a common theme between your evaluations and the others who write in. I look forward to the next game and to anyone listening. This is where Bill gives us a plug, which I always appreciate him for. He's so kind for doing this. Go contribute to the <laughs> NGP Patreon. These guys give quality content each week, and for the price of even $1, you get extra content. $1 is less than a candy bar. Do you think that a candy bar is better than NGP? No. Go donate. Well, sometimes it is. Yeah, it depends on the candy bar. Yeah. But thank and, you. And Bill. the game that week. So you so you uh chased pills with alcohol. 
That's really dangerous. That's though. very yeah, dangerous. You, you shouldn't be dangerous. mixing those two things. But yeah. hey, like I, I bet this game would be fun if you drink heavily, eat takeout, and listen to other music. Like, right? Sure. What, yeah, what you have to modify it. You right. Know, like, if you give it enough extra parameters. We would are, love Jurassic Park. Those are IRL mods that you put on your game. That's fun <laughs> that you have that experience with your wife. That's always fun, no matter what the game is. But uh, yeah, you're and you're right. You. You guessed correctly. The theme is that Tetris is better, and we may yeah. be—I may be unfair in saying that, but I stick no. to it. No, even even wanting to be the contrarian and recognize that this game is good and has its place, I'm agreeing Tetris is better. Thank you guys for your email this week. As always, you can write in and uh, send us your commentary to ngppodcast at gmail.com or you can go on our website, submit it there, ngppodcast.com. We'd love to include your thoughts as a part of our episode each and every week. If you want so to- time of the- But now it's that time of the week where we randomly select a new old game to play for the next seven days. Are you guys ready? I'm more ready than Kenny is. What this if week. Tetris comes up? Fine. Actually, I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> I need a break from these puzzle games. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Randomly selecting now. Kenny, what was this? I don't know. I'm sending good vibes. I want it to be a good game. I'm stressing about whether or not my week's going to be enjoyable or not just based on this. Like, I'm I'm moving. If you're watching on video, you can see all the boxes. And so I need something to be good entertainment for when Cutting I have breaks. <laughs> you may have read the book. You may have watched the movie. But I doubt you have played the game. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is an interactive fiction video game based on the science fiction series of the same name. It was actually designed in part by Douglas Adams, who created the story. It was first released in 1984 for the Apple II, Macintosh, Commodore 64, Amiga, Atari, many different systems. Uh yeah, uh, so we're going to be playing The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but it's, a, it's an entirely text-based game, I believe. This is hilarious Interesting. because I have an unpopular opinion on that book. So you this will like be it. a great episode. Oh my gosh, <laughs> no one's going to be like bitter two games in a row. Oh, I, don't, I don't want this to be an excuse to go back and reread it, though I feel like I well. need to. It's quick. Uh, I know, it's a short one, so I may just because... I liked it as a kid, but I'm afraid I liked it just because it was edgy or whatever. Oh, I've read know. the whole series within the last couple of years. Absolutely loved it. It holds I up? It's, oh my goodness, I think okay, it's well, so then, quality. I think it holds yeah, up. I, I didn't know which like which vibe it was. I knew it was popular, but I thought it was just popular because it was popular. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's all about whether or not you enjoy that kind of British humor, which Nolan doesn't. So, I, like, uh, oh, well, I, I enjoy British humor. You know what? We'll talk about it more next week on it. our episode know. that is all about <laughs> the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, not the book, the video the game. movie, but the 1984 text-based video game? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can totally call it that. There were a lot of text-based video games. There was an era where that's that was the only way you could do certain genres. And so I actually am, am kind of hyped for us to play a like a text-driven game. I really am. And no, Net NetHack didn't count. All right, conclude. If you want to discuss this game or book or movie with us this week, join us in Discord. We have a lively community that chats a lot, except for Kenny and myself lately. I've been a little quiet in there. But anyways, we like to discuss games. We like to talk about life. So check us out. There is an invite link on our Twitter. It's a quick way to get there. Follow us on Twitter while you're there. Got to take a minute and thank all of our supporters, those of you guys who have made the jump and been like Bill and said, hey, we're better than a candy bar. We appreciate you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting us, especially our producers who go way above and beyond and giving us their uh, support, not only to improve the quality of what we do uh, with some financial support, but also with their input into uh, games and what we're doing. And um, they've been a big input impact. They've had a big impact 
on helping us prepare for a hundred hundredth episode, which is coming up. And we uh, are really looking forward to, we're going to do some unique and novel things, hop in discord, get on the website, learn about that stuff and help us spread the news as we hit a hundred episodes that this is a podcast worth listening to. We have put out on social media this week our poll. Uh, we are gearing up for our 100th episode, and in that, we are going to relook at, re-examine three games from our past. So we've got a catalog now of about 100 games played, and we are going to go back and play again three of them. And uh, so we've na- we through our patrons, we've narrowed the list down to about eight. And uh, people are voting right now. We've got 40-something votes now on the three games that we're going to relook at. So you go and input your vote, too. You do not have to be a patron supporter of us, uh, but you do need to have a Patreon account, as that is where the poll is. And make sure to submit your votes uh, over the next couple of weeks before we hit episode number 100. Yeah, this is your chance, if we've gotten a game wrong, to have us come revisit it. Or if there's a game that you really liked us suffering through or enjoying to, for whatever reason, have us go back and look at a game again, good, bad, or ugly, and uh, we think it's going to be a fun experience. This will be like New Game Plus Plus, going back and giving it a second play a second time, and so we're excited. Do follow us on social media this week, Facebook and Twitter at NGP Podcast. You can listen to us directly on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Music, or any other podcast provider of your choice. Feel free to leave an honest review that helps us better our show. You can subscribe so that you are the first to get new NGP episodes. If you are watching us on YouTube, feel free to find our podcast for edited, fully for fully edited episodes for fully ep- for fully edited higher quality episodes join us next week as we play the text based video game the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy don't panic until then i'm still dustin i want to make an intelligent hitchhiker's joke now but i'm falling short i'm nolan and this has been new game plus